lesson, I'm going to show you how to solve more complicated looking equations that look like this one, for example. And I'm going to show you how you can make substitutions in order to write the equations in a simpler looking way so that they're easier to solve. So in the first question, we have to solve x to the power of 4 minus 6x squared plus 5 equals 0. And the first substitution I'm going to make is to switch x squared to the letter y. Okay, so this term here is going to change to a y so that I have minus 6y. This part just stays the same, plus y equals 0. And this term here, x to the power 4, becomes y squared. Because if you square the letter y, it's the same thing as squaring x squared. And if you square x squared, you should be able to see that's the same thing as x to the power 4. Okay, so that's why x to the power 4 is replaced with y squared. So now we have a nice simple quadratic equation to solve. So this one can be factorised, so I'm going to factorise to solve this quadratic. So I'm going to pop in my y values. Remember these two numbers here have to multiply to give positive 5 and add to give negative 6. So this should be negative 1 and negative 5. Okay. So if I'm solving this equation to work out the values of y, the two y values should be positive 1 and positive 5. Now, we haven't finished. Because we made a substitution at the beginning, we have to make sure we swap back to x squared at the end. Remember, y is equal to x squared. So this y value is actually x squared, and so is this one. So there's one step left to do to solve and find the x values and solve this equation. The opposite of squaring is to square root. So if I square root both sides of this little equation here, I get x equals positive or negative 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. And remember, whenever you're square rooting, you get a positive or a negative sign. On the right-hand side, if I look at the other equation, I get x is equal to positive or negative root 5. I'm just going to leave it in its exact form for this question, and they're the solutions. In the next question, we have to solve root x multiplied by root x plus 1 equals 6. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a substitution, and I'm going to replace that root x with the letter y. Okay, so that's the first step. Alright, so this time I'm going to change both these terms to y. So I have y brackets y plus 1 equals 6. Now, if I expand the brackets, I get y squared plus y equals 6. And I can see I now have a quadratic equation which I should be able to solve quite easily. So remember, your goal is to make a substitution so that you can rewrite this question as a nice looking quadratic, okay, which is much easier to solve. So remember when you're solving a quadratic equation, it should be rearranged to equal zero. So I'm going to move this six over to the left hand side, so it's going to change into a negative. This is a nice quadratic that can be factorized to solve, but if you can't factorize the equation, you can always use the quadratic formula and it will give you the same results. So, these two numbers here, inside the brackets, have to multiply to give negative 6, add to give positive 1. So, they should be positive 3 and negative 2. So, from here, I can read off my two values of y. So, here, y should be negative 3, and on the right-hand side, y is positive 2. So, we've solved this quadratic equation to find the values of y. Just remember, though, you're trying to solve this equation at the top, and you're trying to find values of x. Remember you made that substitution at the beginning? We have to remember to swap back at the end. So y is actually equal to root x. So this equation is root x equals negative 3. And on the right hand side we have root x equals 2. Okay? Now, one more thing. On the left hand side, if you're square rooting a number, you can't get a negative result. So this equation on the left has no solutions. But on this side, we can solve this equation to work out the value of x. This is a positive result, so this is acceptable. To get rid of the square root symbol, you would square both sides. 
So if I square the left, I just get x, and if I square the right, I get 4. So for this question, there's only one solution, and x is equal to 4. In the next question, we have to solve 3 multiplied by 9 to the power of x, minus 28 multiplied by 3 to the power of x, plus 9 equals 0. So again, I'm going to make a substitution to try and rewrite the question as a quadratic equation that's easier to solve. So the substitution I'm going to make in this question is 3 to the power of x will be replaced with the letter y. So if I make this substitution, the equation can then be written as 3y squared minus 28y plus 9 equals 0. Okay, so there's my quadratic. Perhaps you can see how I reached this quadratic equation already. That's great. But I will just quickly explain how I got from here to here as it's not always that obvious. Okay, so remember we're replacing 3 to the power of x with the letter y. Well, this part's quite easy to see. This is going to change to the letter y. But over here, 9 to the power of x has changed to y squared. So let's try and see why that's the case. If I rewrite the number 9 as 3 squared, so instead of having 9 to the power of x, I have 3 squared to the power of x. Okay, because 3 squared is 9. Okay, I'm just rewriting it as a power of 3. This can also be written as 3 to the power of 2x. Remember the rules of indices when there are brackets, you multiply the powers together. This is the same as 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of x. Okay, because if you're multiplying two numbers that are the same together, the rule of indices states you add the powers, okay, which is how I got the 2x. And remember I said the substitution is 3 to the power of x is equal to y. So this is y, and this is y, and y times y is y squared. So that's why this beginning part of the equation becomes 3y squared. Okay? So this is a quadratic, again, that I can factorise to solve. So first I'm going to put this into brackets. So in one of the brackets you should have... 3y minus 1, and in the other bracket, y multiplied, um, y minus 9, okay? So that's the factorised form. If you're not sure how to factorise, you can watch my other video uh, where I show you a method called PATH that shows you a method of how to factorise quadratics when there's a number other than 1 at the beginning in front of the y squared term, okay? So, now let's solve this quadratic equation to find our two values of y. This y value should be a third, and this one should be positive 9, okay? Now, just like in the other questions, remember to switch back to your original value. So remember, y is actually equal to 3 to the power of x. So this y value is 3 to the power of x, and so is this one. So, to solve these two equations and work out our two values of x, hopefully you can just see this one. x should be negative 1, because 3 to the power of negative 1 gives you a third, so there's one solution. And this one should be 2, okay, because 3 squared is equal to 9. So there are two solutions to this equation. Just remember, at the start of this type of topic, like with anything, it might not always be that simple to know which substitution you're going to make, but really, I believe practice makes perfect, okay? The more questions that you can practice of each different type of question, the more natural it's going to be and the easier it will become.